Hello and welcome to all my floss tube neighbors. I'm Chris and this is Chris Cross Stitch and today is Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022. Two, 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 two. Two, two. Makes me sound like I'm doing a ballet. Um, if you are a new viewer, welcome to my channel. This is a channel primarily about cross stitching but we talk about so much more than just cross stitching, not other crafts necessarily, but we have a fun time here at Criss Cross Stitch. So welcome to the channel. I hope that you like what you see enough to subscribe to me, to ring that little bell so you're notified when I post new videos. And I, I'm just glad to have you here visiting with me today. If you are a returning viewer, well, welcome back to the neighborhood. I'm so glad to have you here. As usual, you are my extended family all across the country and yay, verily, the globe. And I'm, I'm happy to have you here with me today. I hope all of you are chrising it up in your own way when you encounter struggles or frustrations or just things that want to bring you down. Just remember, hashtag chris it up and look for that spark of joy in your life because they're there. They may, they may be hidden for the moment, but they are indeed there. And if you, uh, sometimes it's just a matter of focusing our attention upon them and it can change our entire day. So Chris it up whenever you, whenever you are in a spot, as my granny used to say. We always start each week here at Criss Cross Stitch by naming Handstanding Cat. Handstanding Cat is the top of Tiki Tree of a Thousand Feet. I'm giggling. <laughs> because, you know, I've now gotten to the point where I say the exact same thing every week. You can probably recite it with me. Uh, none of this is scripted. I've said that a million times, but I guess this part is scripted. We start every week here at Cross Stitch by naming Handstanding Cat. Handstanding Cat is the top of Tiki Tree of a Thousand Faces. And Every now and then I just like to occasionally remind people why I start my videos with this silly little thing. This is a piece of teak driftwood. It's a, it's a decorative accent in my bedroom. It's beautiful. Um, it used to be behind me in the, in the frame here. But one of my friends uh, said that it looked like a, a handstanding cat. And, and you, I mentioned that one day and asked for names and I got so many that I couldn't pick just one. And the reason I do this is, is, is for no other reason than to bring a sense of inclusiveness to this channel. You help shape what I put forth every week, whether you realize it or not. And this is just one way to include you. It's just one other way to mention the name of one of my neighbors and make them feel a little bit special and like they're contributing to the, the program, which you are. So today, Handstanding Cat has been named, oh my gosh, I didn't really prepare this very well. Hold on. You know when you leave your iPad alone for too long, it goes to sleep? And why does, why, why is it that whenever you want technology to go quickly, it never does? This week, Handstanding Cat is named by my viewer, Chris R. Chris R. has decided to name handstanding cat Ada. Ada, which is a great name for a cross-stitched mascot. Or Aida, um, which is actually um, an opera. Um, and I don't know why we say Ada like Ada. I mean, who decided that the fabric was Ada and the, but not like the opera Aida by Verdi? Who decided that? I don't understand it. But I say it and will continue to do so. I don't know. Maybe I can start a trend. Um, I'm doing this on 16 count Aida. <laughs> that sounds strange. Anyway, handstanding cat Chris R. Ada. Aida. 
Several of you have asked about this, and I told you that it was coming down the pipeline, and it certainly is coming down the pipeline. Next month, we will begin what I am calling hashtag Mary Will Sal. And this is a stitch along that we will be doing. Um, and I'm going to tell you more about it next week. Next week, luckily, my video coincides with March the 1st. And we will be beginning this uh, on March the 1st. Uh, I will include the story that, that was the inspiration for this. I will be talking about a chart that was graciously designed by one of my viewers, Aya R, and uh, will be made available to you um, in some fashion. I'm still working out the particulars. This will be connected to a charitable endeavor, and we will be doing uh, Mary Will Sal for the sp during the springtime. So it is definitely coming. It is definitely uh, focused around daffodils, but not limited to, and I'll talk more about that next week, but just because I wanted to, to address some people who have been asking me, yes, we're definitely doing it. It will begin with March uh, 1st, and I'm very excited about it, and I can think of no other, no better tribute to this dear, sweet lady who was in my life, who whose story touch so many of yours as well. So uh, that's coming next week, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a teaser for that. So stay tuned. So on to the cross stitching. You know, it always seems that when I have a, a low stitchy week, uh, and then I come on and I talk about that, something about the saying of it and the, 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 the sharing it, and hearing all of you say, I had a low stitchy week too, don't worry about it. The energy that bounces back to me is so wonderful that I have an amazing stitching week, the following week. And that's what I had. Um, it, it, this is a wonderful, uh, this, what we do together, I think is such a great exchange and it really helped me this week. And I got a lot done. The first thing I want to share with you is a, um, is a fully finished object. What? what? Where did that come from, Chris? You're, you might be asking yourself, or not. You might just be sitting there stitching, in which case I just sounded like an idiot. But, um, but you may be wondering, where did that come from? Well, what I, as you may know, I am doing each month for my little, you know, display de objet de art here. <laughs> Uh, um, I'm doing these individual months from a prairie schoolers, a prairie year. And I began with February. I will do January next year, but I began with February and stitched this up and, and, and love it very, very much. Um, and knowing that the beginning of March was uh, impending, I decided to stitch March. Oh, <laughs> and... <laughs> live television, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. I finished it. This was a really easy stitch and I needed it. I needed an easy stitch um, and I needed a finish. I needed a, bol a, a ego bol bolstering uh, confidence booster. And sometimes it's okay to do that for yourself. So I did this. This was, not only was it an easy stitch, it was a delightfully fun stitch. And I, I literally did it over the course of a weekend. I began it on Friday and I finished it on Sunday and I devoted my entire weekend to it. I didn't bounce back and forth to other projects, even though I probably should have. Uh, but it was very satisfying to have this finish. It was very satisfying to know that I'm ready to change out the display next week. And I just loved everything about it with all of these designs. I am moving the border out because these are six by six inch pre-made squares. This is a, this is, um, this is an Aida cloth that is st stretched over, um, that was the weirdest wink in the world. Did you see that? I was like, ah, 
so ungraceful. Um, this is pre-made Aida frame oatmeal. It says 14 count. It's really close. This particular package was really closer to a 15 or a 16, to be honest with you. Um, but that is irrelevant. But uh, b because they are small, I am moving the borders out just so that they, fr that they don't look so clustered in the center. And this one, even though I did move it out an equal amount of stitches, it it worked up a little bit more rectangular, but I don't mind it at all. I think it looks absolutely lovely. So this is a, a very, um, I'm very proud of this FFO and, and I'm keeping them rather austere. You know, I thought about doing some kind of embellishment around it or maybe frame, I, but I've just not done it and I quite like it. I, I tend to skew towards simple, less is more many times. Um, so there we go. A Prairie Year March by a Prairie Schooler, and I'm very pleased with it. My works in progress are coming along. Now, two, I have two things that, of course, we all have two things that were called for Whipgo this month. I'm probably not going to finish them. Uh, I have, Both of the projects that were called, I had on my Whipgo board that I would devote seven days to them stitching. And my day, when I say a day, this is what I mean by a day, uh, not a whole day. It means that I have sat down and devoted a significant amount of time to them. More than a thread, less than a whole day. So and the majority of that for me, the, what that usually amounts to for me is about two or three hours if I'm going to, over the course of an afternoon or an evening. Um, sometimes I go back and forth between projects just to keep the, the freshness of them. But a, a significant amount of time that's more than a thread. So uh, I want to see a demonstrable change in my, in my, in my whip uh, for it to count as a day. And I pulled 100 owls out 100 Owls by Owl Forest Embroidery. This is a gorgeous chart. It is a, uh, my friend uh, Michael at the Floss Tube Channel Star Parade, he and I did this as a start along together. And we are both still working on it. We have both still let it languish a bit. But I pulled it out and I'm really enjoying stitching it. What I've noticed now, interestingly enough, is some of these things that I began when I was new to stitching on fabrics other than a Aida. I'm gonna do that the whole video. Get ready. Um, what I learned is that now I stitch so much more skillfully on even weaves and linen. Um, than I did when I started these projects. And some of the reason that I didn't go further on these projects um, was because I didn't enjoy it as much. I was so focused on stitching on this new material that I was going so slowly, I didn't feel like I was making much progress. Now, it's a different story. So I enjoyed the day that I spent on, I've only put one day in on 100 Owls, but more will come. I'm not gonna finish it in February, but I'll get seven days within the first few weeks of March. So that'll be checked off. But there's 100 Owls by Owl Forced Embroidery. My other whip go call for February was uh, the Zealand Sampler. And I'm not even gonna try to say the first initials of it because I messed them up every single time I said them in the last video. And right now I can't even remember them again. I um, apologize <laughs> to Jacob so badly, but I'm just calling it a Zealand Sampler by Modern Folk Embroidery. This was my birthday start uh, last year in August. Again, love it. I just love it. Um, put it away. This is a small sampler and I, I discovered surprisingly that I'm about 30% of the way through it. Uh, and uh, again, seven days. I put one day in on, no, two days in on this so far. So I have five more to go. 
this is just a beautiful stitch. I'm doing this uh, with one uh, strand of DMC over two on this beautiful Edinburgh linen. And it's, it's, I intentionally did that. I like the coverage. I like the, on some things, I don't want it to be completely opaque. On some things, I like seeing those X's. I like that old world quality of, of, of seeing the X's in cross stitch, because after all, we are doing cross stitch, aren't we? Um, and I finished a motif. Uh, I put another day in since I last saw you and I finished this entire motif that you're seeing now. Just delightful. I'm doing this in the blues colorway, as you may well know, and I just love it. Not going to go on too long about it, but those were my two WIPGO uh, projects for February that won't be finished in February, but will be finished soon. My third work in progress that I touched, yes, three. Can you believe it? I have three. And not only that, I have four. I'm going to get to that in a second. But I went back to the train of dreams, the wonderful train of dreams. This is a Hade, my first Hade, not my first full coverage, but my first Hade, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs, beautiful artwork by Randall Spangler, train of dreams. This is a stitch along uh, that I was... Uh, well, it's a gift. It was a gift from my dear viewer, Michaela, and several people are doing, there's a Facebook group, and I, as you may know, I'm not involved in Facebook, but, but a lot of people are stitching it, and it's just so beautiful and colorful and fun and whimsical, and I made some more progress on it. Not much, but I touched it, and I want to show you. I will never show you a whip if I just put seven stitches in it. I, I just won't do that because I, I mean, why? But if, if you can see a, a change, I'm gonna show you. And I touched it and I'm showing you, <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. I may be a little behind this week on my amount of stitches, but I'm not worried about it. I, uh, I started before I was supposed to anyway and got ahead. Uh, but Michaela is just, she's, she's blazing. Let me tell you, she's color uh, completing. And um, she is just, chugging along with the train of dreams. Arr, arr, arr. See what I did there? Comedy. Comedy. Train of dreams, heaven and earth designs, Randall Spangler artwork. My last work in progress for this week was the amazing uh, modern folk embroidery Fruits of Plenty. This was the uh, mystery stitch along in 2021 that my friend Kathy at the Floss Tube Channel to Die House and I are continuing <laughs> into this year. Uh, the hashtag still fresh fruit sal is a very popular. I'm so glad that those of you who have started this beautiful piece are using it. And I'm so glad that those of you who did not finish last year are using it. But there are so many beautiful iterations of this going on. It's just still a delight to, to see. And uh, as you know, I'm, I'm driven to finish February in the month of February, and I think I'm on track. Um, I'm going to be doing it by the seat of my pants, but I, I'm going to finish it. Uh, so this is my progress. As you can see, what I'm doing, I'm doing all the darkest color um, in this particular section first. And then I am, I'm, today my goal is to go back and to begin filling in the central area and start on the, on all of the, my, the variegation. And then the rest of the week is just completing all the variegation all the way down. I've got to do the little birds at the bottom. But I, if I am, if I am consistent, I am going to finish this during the month of February. Promise you, promise you, promise you. If I don't, it's okay, because I will still, I'll finish it within the first few days of March and this just continue right on. But, uh, but I think I'm gonna do it. I really do think I'm gonna do it. Man, I love this so much. I just love it so much. And when it is completed, it will be the largest thing I've ever stitched. Um, it will be the largest thing I've ever stitched. The, uh, the other, the second largest will have been, is the Wizard of Oz piece that I showed you last year, which is, by the way, it's at the Framers, and we've picked out the 
I may have mentioned this earlier, we picked out the frame and I'm not gonna get it, but I should get it. I think I'm supposed to get it this coming month. So, wow, that will be exciting to show you that. I'm so excited about it. But anyway, back to this piece. This will be the largest thing I've ever stitched. I'm so pleased with it. Love the colors, love the colors. And I'm just so happy with it. So that concludes the my stitching for the week. And it was a lot, and I'm happy that it was a lot. Oh, I also worked on the thing that I'm not gonna show you yet. <laughs> Speaking of collaboration, this week it is the Neighbors Corner, and I'm so happy that you are all really enjoying this segment. Uh, as you know, I rotate my special segments. I have Story Time with Chris, and then I have Chris's Toy Chest, and now I have the Neighbors Corner. So every uh, three weeks, this comes up, but I am going to tell you that next month, in the month of March, I'm going to have a special crisscross stitch devoted entirely to the Neighbors Corner because I have so many submissions now that I don't want to get backlogged, and I definitely want uh, all the beautiful things that you've been sending me shown. So next week, I'm planning on doing I don't know if it's going to be a separate episode or it'll just be, I'll just devote one of my weekly episodes to it, but that will be coming. But this week, I have two beautiful things to show you. The first is from our neighbor, Tess B. And this is a gorgeous, very special quilt that she did for her granddaughter. Here it is. Tessa's granddaughter was born in 2016, and she wanted to create for her a, a unique quilt, a one-of-a-kind quilt, and that is certainly what she accomplished. The center design is a countered cross-stitch pattern. This is by Bothy Threads, and she did this with waist canvas over the top of, of you know, your standard quilting cotton fabric. Uh, she chose it because she thought it would be appropriate for a growing child, not just a baby. Um, and her granddaughter's name begins with the letter A. She, she wanted to do something differently than this, just the traditional A for apple, or et cetera, et cetera. And uh, she saw the alien and the other fun motifs in this particular chart, and she thought it was perfect. So that's the one she chose, and man, did she choose well. It's just adorable. Um, and of course, once she had stitched the whole thing, she removed the waste canvas and that was that particular panel of the quilt. She added the color strips of the fabric and, and this is really a toddler sized quilt, um, which she hand quilted the entire thing. Um, hand quilted butterflies, hand quilted flowers, um, hand quilted the letter A, which was around the edge. And, and she finished it, of course, with a handmade ruffle. Such a beautiful piece. She said that she, uh, she gave it to her on her first birthday. She still loves it. Uh, um, Tessa's daughter, the mother of this, the child to whom this was gifted, uh, wanted to keep it special. But Tess said, no, don't do that. I want it. I want it to be a part of her life. So... Tess says, it is frequently now a picnic blanket for tea parties with stuffed animals. Um, and I think that that's just amazing. So Tess, brava to you. A job, a beautiful, beautiful quilt that I'm sure that your granddaughter treasures now and will treasure for many years to come. So just thank you for sharing it. And I, I know that everybody will, will just absolutely, absolutely love that. So thank you, Tess. The next piece in the Neighbor's Corner that I would like to show to you today comes from our neighbor, Carol D. And I love this particular Neighbor's Corner uh, piece because this is actually the result of one of our giveaways here. I love seeing the things that you stitch up from the giveaways. It just completes the cycle for me. You know, you send giveaways out into the ether and there's absolutely no expectation for you to, 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 I gave this to you, you need to work on it. Oh, that's ridiculous. You know, you, you might never ever stitch it and that's absolutely fine. But I love seeing it when you do. And I love seeing, you know, like I said, it completes the, the cycle. Well, Carol did that. She did that with this piece. 
Um, this is Peppermint and Holly by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais. And this was, as I said, one of our giveaways. And she stitched this and fin fully finished it into this adorable little pillow. What makes this all the more wonderful is that Carol is new to cross-stitching. She has not been cross-stitching that long at all. And she, you know, watches the channel. She won the giveaway. She got the chart, she stitched it, and she FFO'd it, which I think is, is more than worthy of celebration. So congratulations, Carol. And I'm glad, that, I'm glad that you are continuing to enjoy this craft and to be inspired by this channel and other channels that you watch here on FlossTube. So well done, and thank you so much for sharing that with me. I really do appreciate it, and I know everyone else will too, especially other new cross-stitchers. If you have a submission for The Neighbor's Corner, please, please, please don't ever hesitate to send it to me. Please email me at the email address below. It's crisscrossstitch at gmail.com. Make sure you spell it with three S's. Because, just look at it uh, because sometimes that trips people up and it is a little bit clunky. Um, but email me with your photographs and the story behind, um, behind your stitching and I will be more than happy to feature it on the Neighbor's Corner segment and, uh, and, and, and in future um, episodes that may be completely devoted to the Neighbor's Corner. So I love this so much, this component of the channel. So thank you to Tess, thank you to Carol, and thank you to all of you who will continue to send things in for me to share. In Happy Mail this week, I had an embarrassment of riches come to me from two of my neighbors, my neighbor Robin B and my neighbor Sarah W sent me, both sent me um, charts uh, that they had in their stash that they wanted to, to, to share with the community. And, and Sarah uh, actually had an extra of the Black Needle Society's Stitchy Planners for 2022. And she she very graciously gifted that to me. Uh, and, and a couple of other things were in her package. And you all say, you know, keep, you know, these, these are for giveaways, but if you see anything you like, you know, you can, you can have that. And very often I will take one little thing or, you know, whatever, and, and put the rest into my, into my giveaway box that I have. I have a magazine. I have one of those cardboard magazine holders and I put all those. I'm very organized. But um, but in Sarah's box, there were more than a couple of things that went into my box. <laughs> so, but I, I want to thank you both for doing that. Always, I say to each and every one of you who watch, um, I'm so grateful for your gifts uh, that, that, both benefit me and all of us here at Criss Cross Stitch. So thank you so much for that. They are very much appreciated and I am excited to share them with you. And that's a wonderful segue to the giveaway winners from last week. We had three giveaways from last week and they were the following charts. The first with the keyword spice was this adorable little chart with a snowman and a gingerbread man. Very cute. The winner of this chart was Cactus Needle Stitches. Cactus Needle Stitches. That's not your name. So please send me your name and your address to the email below and I will get that out to you when next giveaways go out. By the way, it's Typically running now, I have a system that giveaways go out about every two to three weeks. So, uh, so just know that if you win, it might take a couple of weeks to get to you, but it won't take that long. But Cactus Needle Stitches, please send me your email. I sounded very, I sounded as if I was talking with a very kind of northern accent just then, didn't I? Like I didn't open my mouth enough to make the sound come out correctly. Send me your email. I sound like I'm from Wisconsin. 
I'm just gonna do the rest of the giveaways talking in a Wisconsin accent. All of you Wisconsinians are gonna kill me. Let's go back to Southern. It's much more easy on my voice. The next chart was the spring chicken chart. Little, a little small there. And that was won by Kathy Deal. Kathy, please send me your email. Congratulations. And the third chart from last week was a beautiful, a beautiful chart you're seeing right now. Keyword for this was wind. And this will go to another unnamed person. Stitch Party of One. Stitch Party of One. Please send me your actual name and your email and I will get that out to you. All of you, congratulations. Thank you for entering and I hope that you enjoyed those when you received them. Do you hear my cat? Listen. That's pumpkin. This is pumpkin. Pumpkin spoiled rotten. He hears me in here talking and he thinks that I'm in here talking to somebody without him. And see, the bedroom is an off Kitty Limits place. So he gets real, he, he, he's used to sitting at that door and meowing until I acknowledge his presence. I hear you. Yes. I'm busy. Very smart cat. Today's giveaways are themed around a common theme. That's redundant. Today's giveaways are themed, and it is Sampler Day here at Criss Cross Stitch in the Giveaway Land. Sampler Day. The first giveaway for next week is Little House Needleworks Honey Bee Sampling. This is an adorable chart. Crazy Band Lady Stitches probably has this one. She has a uh, floss tube channel under 1,000 subs club, I believe, still. She might be uh, approaching 1,000. Um, but she loves bee stitching. Uh, but the keyword for this is going to be honeybee. Honeybee. Little House Needleworks. The second giveaway for next week will be a Brenda Gervais. A little but ba da da Brenda Gervais. Sampler Hill. Sampler Hill. This is a large sampler. The key word for this is going to be Hill. H-I-L-L. -L, hill. And the third giveaway, another Brenda Gervais sampler. This one is the Heart and Hand sampler. Appropriate for February, the key word for this will be Heart. Heart. H-E-A-R-T. So if you would like to be considered for any of those three charts, please use those keywords in your comment. Please be over the age of 18 so that I can ask you for your address. Please be a subscriber to the channel. Please like the video. And as always, don't use the words giveaway or prizes or winner. You know, you know the drill in your comment. So those will be drawn prior to my filming on next Tuesday, Tuesday. Kaylee Cross Stitch likes how I say Tuesday. I don't know. I've always said it that way. I don't know how else to say it. Tuesday? <laughs> Tuesday. Tuesday. I will glad I will pay you for what is that from? I will gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger. I will gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. What is that from? That's like a Popeye thing, isn't it? Anyway. Um so much stuff rattles around up in here. I swear sometimes when I walk, it sounds like I've got marbles in my hand. Um, use those keywords. Those are the giveaways for next week. So thank you for being patient with me today during the cacophony that was my studio space <laughs> for Chris Cross Stitch. I really do appreciate it. I hope that you have had a great week and I hope that you have a wonderful week ahead, a week full of stitching and happiness. Don't forget to Chris it up 
in those in those down moments because I certainly re re try to re remind myself of that and remind myself of all of you because you do uplift my spirit. Thank you so much for joining me today and until next time, take care. Bye-bye.